Welcome to the College Fairs of Greater Denver. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as a facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first announcement, your camera and microphone are off, so we are unable to see or hear you. Second announcement, you can use the Q&A feature to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. Third announcement. This is just one of a few different sessions that we're offering. So feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you can access that recording by visiting the website on your screen, strivescan.com slash greater Denver. With all of that said, I wanna go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from Boise State University. All right, good evening, everybody. Hopefully you can see my screen okay. Um, my name is Sydney Montgomery. I'm the Senior Admissions Counselor and Campus Visits Manager at Boise State University. I'm so excited to kind of share some information with you all and hopefully connect with you after the fair with any further questions that you might have. So first and foremost, as far as our Boise State student population, um, we have about 24,000 students. So we are the largest public institution in the state of Idaho. Um, in our incoming freshman classes, we have about 50% of our student body coming from the state of Idaho and about 50% of our student body coming from outside of the state of Idaho. We have students from all 50 states and over 65 countries. And like I said, that student population of 24,000. You'll know you go to a big school on game day, but our average class size is still right around 30 students for the entire university. As far as the city of Boise, no matter where you're at in your college search, we tell students you have to love where you live, not just where you go to school. Um, and being in Boise was one of the best parts about my college experience at Boise State um, as an alumni. Um, we've been recognized for a variety of things, anything from the fastest growing city in the country to one of the best downtowns in America, one of the safest places to live and one of the best places for outdoor enthusiasts. So if you're looking for a place where you could be snowboarding in the morning, class in the afternoon, a football game or a concert at night, you're in the right spot. Um, for those of you coming from Colorado, we're a quick flight over from Denver and the airport's about 10 minutes um, driving from our campus. As far as our academic majors of interest, we have a resource that I'll put um, in, the, in the chat that'll be available for you called Major Finder. It's majors.boisestate.edu, or you can just Google Major Finder. We have about 190 different majors and minors to choose from, so there's a lot of options. So if you're curious if we have yours, please feel free to utilize our Major Finder resource. You can see our top majors chosen from our incoming freshman class is listed here. Um, I point out number two because we want students to know it's actually very common to come undeclared. You can still receive scholarships, still graduate in four years, um, but you can see kind of some of our highlight programs. We're known for our College of Business and Economics due to our robust internship program. We have one of the largest internship programs in the Pacific Northwest, so we're known for the sheer amount and diverse amount of options when it comes to internships in a variety of academic areas. Um, our nursing program is one of the largest in the Pacific Northwest. We admit 80 students per semester in the city of Boise. Um, three of the region's largest hospitals are right next to our campus. You'll also see highlights like our computer science program with a 100% job placement rate actually housed in downtown Boise, criminal justice, political science, and again, over 200 academic majors and areas of interest. So if you're curious if we have yours, please let us know. Now, as far as applying to Boise State, we are test blind this year, meaning we are not looking at SAT or ACT requirements. We are solely looking at your GPA. So to apply to Boise State, you'll apply online through our website and then simply send us your transcript. Um, those two things will apply you to Boise State. Once we receive those two materials, it only takes us about two to three weeks to let you know of your admission decision. Once we've received that application and your transcript, we'll automatically consider you for our non-resident scholarships. Our deadline to be considered for scholarships and to receive those materials is December 15th for Colorado students. So make sure that you get all that stuff turned in now as our application is open. We have three different non-resident scholarships available to students. Um, our average GPA for an incoming first year student is a 3.5. And that's for resident and non-resident. And so you can see at a 3.5, you would be eligible for the payette, which is $8,000 a year. 
All of these scholarships are four-year renewable. And again, you can see what that would drop your tuition down to, many of which would make it less expensive to stay in Colorado, some of which to make it right on par, and some of which to make it very competitive. So again, you're automatically considered for these scholarships as long as you apply and get us your transcript by December 15th of your senior year. I am also available and work with students from Colorado specifically, so please let me know how I can help, whether it's to know what scholarships you might be eligible for, if we have a program of interest, or to set up a campus visit. We are doing in-person campus visits right now, and we highly recommend coming to campus. So please feel free to take a screenshot or a photo. You can email me. Um, you can text me if that's more comfortable, or you can set up a one-on-one -on -one virtual appointment or a phone appointment, and I'm here to help with whatever I can do to make Boise State your future Idaho. So with that, thank you so much. I'll be available after for questions. Thank you, Sydney. Up next, we have the University of Idaho. Hi, my name is Dana Morrison and I'm an assistant director of admissions for the University of Idaho. Uh, U of I is in Moscow, Idaho, but I'm regionally based in Colorado, and the university was founded in 1889, and we're the flagship and land-grant university for the state, so we have academics that range from agriculture and engineering to art and education. With around 9,000 undergraduate students, you can have the traditional college experience, but with smaller class sizes and can really engage with your classmates and professors. At U of I, students participate in hands-on research beyond the classroom to develop those critical thinking skills that employers are looking for. We truly do have programs for all interests on our campus. Students can learn about dairy production in our on-campus barns, discover more about wildfires in our experimental forest, perform on stage for a theater or dance, or live trade stocks with real money, all within an average class size of about 24 students. We also have pre-professional tracks like pre-law and pre-health to prepare you for future professional school. Our programs are direct admit, so there is not an additional application for the major you want to study. Once you're admitted to U of I, you can start taking those business classes or designing in the architecture lab. With 93 undergraduate major options, we most likely have a degree that can set you on your pathway to a successful career. We also offer internships, undergraduate research, and study abroad opportunities across all programs of study. A unique experience for U of I students is Semester in the Wild. The Taylor Wilderness Research Station is the most remote teaching and learning facility in the lower 48. Students take classes in ecology, environmental writing, wilderness management, outdoor leadership, and environmental history all within the Idaho wilderness. This is an option for students after taking a first year English class. So you can jump right into adventure when you come to U of I. And if spending a semester in the remote wilderness is not your cup of tea, you can always go abroad to a place like Harlexton College in England, about an hour outside of London. U of I is affiliated with over 370 universities in 69 countries, and we provide almost $160,000 in study abroad scholarships each year, helping students afford opportunities abroad. When it comes to student life, students experience college in a beautiful and safe environment, one that provides outdoor adventure, 16 different D1 athletic teams to cheer on, and activities year-round. Our outdoor program allows for students to enjoy hiking, backpacking, rafting, cross-country skiing, and climbing right in U of I's backyard. We do have students from all 50 states and 59 countries are represented on our campus. You will meet people from all different backgrounds, creating a unique and diverse experience. U of I has more than 170 clubs and organizations that range from Greek life to special interest groups. And we have multicultural programming to support our students from diverse backgrounds. You do have to live on campus your freshman year. So we have four residence halls and living learning communities for you to choose from. Our Greek community also allows for students to live on campus in their houses their freshman year. So it's a wonderful way for out of state students like yourself to connect quickly and form community on our campus. However, you do not have to go Greek to make those connections on our campus. There's still those other 170 plus clubs and organizations for you to join. You don't have to join all of them, but at least one or two to really grow your community at U of I. Moscow, not Moscow, like Russia, 
is truly a college town with a population of around 25,000. Just blocks from campus is Moscow's historic main street where there are coffee houses, boutiques, and thrift shops, art galleries, great restaurants, and live music. You can fly either into Pullman, Washington or Spokane, Washington to come visit us because we are in Northern Idaho and we have daily campus tours and preview days throughout the year. Going into your senior year, you can apply to Idaho via our website or the Common app. We have rolling admissions, but our financial aid priority date is December 1 of your senior year. We are test optional for fall 2022, but if you have tested, you are welcome to send your scores for our way for your review. We require your transcript for admissions purposes, but do not need any other documents unless we specifically ask you for them or you just want to send them our way for a review. We do not require an additional application for scholarships. It's included in your application for admission. And finally, if you're like me, you appreciate a good value. When it comes to qual quality, affordability, and career success, U of I offers one of the best values available. With $30 million worth of scholarships offered annually, students like you have access to an affordable out-of-state experience. We offer the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, also known as WUI, based on residency, so you'll receive an automatic discount of more than $15,000 per year coming from the state of Colorado. Thank y'all so much for joining us. I hope to chat more with you soon. You can take my information from the contact card here or scan the QR code for a personalized digital ebook. With all that said, Go Vandals! Thank you, Dana. Up next, we have Idaho State University. Hold on. Oh. I was clicking on the wrong one. Okay, <laughs> good start. Um, so my name is Morgan, um, and I am an admissions advisor um, here at Idaho State University in Pocatello. Um, I actually am the admissions advisor that kind of covers the Colorado Territory, so that's why I'm here today. Um, so I'm just going to get going here with some uh, fun facts about ISU. Um, so we were founded in 1901, so comes uh, with that comes a lot of traditions. Uh, you can see these pillars here uh, in the background um, of this slide. Um, and we do a couple of fun traditions up here. One, we do a big mud run up there. Uh, we also do some homecoming traditions, things like that. We have around 12,000 students. Um, so I like to say we're on like the smaller end of a medium sized school. Um, you can see we have 59 different countries represented, 48 states. And then we do have a 13 to one student faculty ratio. So that's pretty small, um, which means even in your undergrad classes, you are gonna have that kind of more personalized experience. Um, oh no, does not look like my next slide is loading. There we go. Okay. So we do have four different locations. Pocatello is our main campus. We also have satellite campuses in Idaho Falls, Twin Falls, and Meridian. Now the Meridian campus is a little bit different. You can't take many undergraduate classes there. Basically our Meridian Health Science Center is um, a copy of all of our health science programs that are in Pocatello. So we are the health um, Science School of Idaho. So we have a, a variety of health science programs and we doubled up um, so that we can fulfill um, all of the, the need for those. We are a Carnegie classified doctoral research institution as well. So if you're interested in doing any sort of research, we have all of that um, on our campus. We do have over 250 different degree and certificate options. So I'm definitely not going to spend the rest of my six minutes talking about all of those. Um, but here's kind of a, a brief breakdown of what that looks like. So we lumped them into different colleges. Um, College of Arts and Letters is, is kind of like uh, English, uh, fine arts, communication, and then all the social and behavioral sciences. Um, so that's the college I graduated from. I got my degree in psychology. The rest of them are a little more self-explanatory. Um, one thing that uh, sets us apart, we do have a College of Technology on our campus, which means you can do um, technical certificates, uh, get in and out within about a couple semesters, um, do associate degrees. So those would be things like cosmetology, automotive tech, um, respiratory tech um, assistantships, things like that, uh, welding. So we have those programs as well. So we offer technical certificates all the way up to doctoral programs. So we have pretty much anything um, and they're all kind of lumped into these different colleges. 
we do have over 150 different clubs and organizations so there's lots for you to choose from um, and if there isn't something that you like or, or if there's something that you feel like is missing you can always start a new club that's how we got zombie survival club one year um, we do have uh, we are division one so if you're interested in playing a sport definitely reach out to um, the uh, various uh, coaches and programs because they obviously are going to have some different um, requirements for you but all of our uh, sporting events are free for students so if you want to go to the football game it's totally free you just swipe your card we are pretty well known for our outdoor activities as well so we have something called our outdoor adventure center um, so if you want to go out and go kayaking or hiking or biking or fishing or anything just go in there and ask them and they'll tell you all the best places to go um, we do have housing on campus. Now, it is not a requirement to live on campus. So if it's something that you would be interested in, awesome. Um, if not, that's up to you. Um, I had a wonderful time living on campus, and I'd be more than happy to chit chat with you guys later about that. We also have an honors program if you're interested in either getting your honors distinction or honors degree. And then we have a program called Bengal Bridge, where you can start uh, taking classes over the summer for a reduced credit price. So again, if you're interested in that, I can definitely give you more information. Let's see. Okay, um, so we do have a, a WUI program. And as you can see, Colorado right there, that's you guys. Um, so that uh, looking at our kind of cost breakdown, um, you can see for non-residents, uh, normally the tuition is 24000 With WUI, it does bring that down. And then we also have something called an, a non-resident tuition waiver, which actually brings you down to in-state tuition. Um, that room and board cost is um, dependent upon whether or not you choose to live on campus. The books and supplies is pretty estimated. Now, um, in order to earn one of these, uh, either a WUI or a non-resident tuition waiver, you do need to apply before a certain deadline. That's going to be February 15th of your senior year. So it's important that you apply before then. Um, we have lots of other scholarships as well as some internship options. So if you're looking to kind of supplement um, that WUI or non-resident tuition waiver you might receive, then that's these are, are great options. Our application is pretty simple. You need to fill out the application on our website, um, pay the fee, the application fee. We do need your high school transcripts, need to be sent from your high school. And then we have not decided if we are going to be requiring test scores specifically for admissions at the moment, but I'm encouraging everyone to send them just in case, um, also so that we can get you placed in the right classes. Um, our minimum requirements to get admitted are 2.5 GPA um, and 18 on the ACT and a 1030 on the SAT. Um, we do individual campus tours. So I definitely recommend you come um, and check it out. We will give you like a full campus tour for an hour and then you get to meet with your uh, department of choice. So this next slide is just my contact info, which is not loading for some reason. There we go, okay. So you can take a picture of that or you can scan that QR code and it'll take you to our website where all of our um, contacts are. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Our next presenter is Montana State University. All right. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Caleb Chambers, and I'm admissions counselor here at Montana State University. Um, I also just graduated from MSU this spring, so I still kind of remember what it's like to be a student. So if you want to know a little bit more about the student experience, aside from what I tell you, please feel free to ask in the Q&A section. Um, yeah, let me get this started real quick. Sorry, it's taking a second to load. Okay, so Montana State University is located in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, we're surrounded by over 80 miles of hiking trails and about 1.8 million acres of wildland. So we're a very outdoorsy community. Um, Bozeman's a town of about 40,000 people. So we've got that really like small town, tight knit community, um, as well as all the amenities of a larger town. We do also have Montana's largest airport um, with a ton of direct flights to Denver. So if you're wanting to still visit home, that's a great option for students here. Um, a little bit about Montana State. So we have a little over 16,800 students. We're the largest university in the state of Montana. Um, and about 14,700 of those students are in undergrad. So we are a predominantly undergrad university. Um, yeah, about 50% of our freshmen come from out of state. Uh, we're represented by 49 states in over 60 countries. 
Um, so similar to Bozeman, we have, you know, all the support and campus culture of a smaller university with all the opportunities of a larger university. Uh, we have over 300 clubs and activity groups on campus um, from fraternity sorority life, um, identity based groups, major specific clubs. Uh, someone just made a sandwich eating club where they get together twice a month and make sandwiches and use university money to do it, um, which is really fun. Uh, we're also a D1 athletic school. So if you're interested in athletics, um, let me know and I'll link you to our recruitment page as well as every student gets free tickets to all of our athletic events, um, which is a great way for students to be involved on campus. Um, a little bit more about our areas of study. So we have over 250 academic programs at MSU. Um, and here I have listed all of our academic colleges. Um, and something to note is our honors college. If you're a part of the honors college, then you get an additional honor certificate. They have smaller class sizes, um, as well as classes that are just specific to the honors college that aren't offered to the rest of the university, which is really neat. Um, yeah, so also if you go to montana.edu slash academics, you can look through all of our major options and see what courses you have to take freshman through senior year in order to obtain that degree. Um, and then a little bit more about what we do within our academics at MSU. So we are the only top tier research university in our region. Um, we rank in the top 3% of universities nationwide for our expenditures on research. Also, because we are a predominantly undergrad university, um, every student, regardless of major, is expected to do research in their time at MSU. So you get access to really high quality research um, in your undergrad program that a lot of students don't get until they're in graduate programs, which is really great. Um, we also are nationally recognized for our honors college, um, and we have a ton of students that win major national awards and scholarships, um, such as like the Goldwater Scholarship. Um, to let you know a little bit our, about our admissions requirements, uh, so we do have rolling admissions at MSU, so we don't have any hard deadlines. Uh, we also don't have a priority commitment date, so you don't have to be committed to MSU until you pay your first tuition bill. So we really try to give you that room um, to make the best decision for you. And with that, in our applications, you don't need any essays, letters of recommendation, um, and we don't need a transcript from you until you graduate from high school. Uh, we also have a two-week turnaround on our applications, so we try to get that back to you really quick. Um, and in order to be admitted to MSU, you either need a 2.5 GPA to be in the top half of your class, um, or 22 ACT, 1120 SAT, uh, but we are now test optional. So those aren't required in order to be admitted, but if you'd like to submit your scores, you definitely can. Yeah, so a little bit about our scholarship. So for y'all in Colorado specifically, uh, I was a WUI scholar, scholar from Colorado. So we are a part of the WUI program. Um, with that scholarship, you get about $16,000 a year, uh, which brings you down to 150% of our in-state tuition. Um, we also have what we call our achievement awards, which are automatically granted uh, based on the GPA you report in your application. And those achievement awards range anywhere from $2,000 to $15,000 a year for up to four years. Um, we also have several departmental and college-based scholarships that you can apply for every year that you're a student. Um, and we are also FAFSA optional, but we do highly recommend you apply for the FAFSA. And as we're test optional for admissions, we're also test optional for scholarships. So we don't use ACT or SAT scores in order to determine scholarship allotments. Um, and just a little bit about what all it takes to be admitted to MSU. So you've applied to MSU, you've got accepted. Um, the next things of note are our housing application, um, which it opens tomorrow if you're a prospective uh, senior for the 2022 fall, as well as orientation registration, um, and then your official high school transcript when you graduate and submit your test scores as you would like to. And then, sorry, there we go. Yeah, and another thing is we have campus visits Monday through Friday, um, where you can tour campus, meet with an admissions counselor like myself or someone else, or meet with your department or residence life. Uh, here's my email and my phone number if you'd like to get in contact with me. And thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Caleb. Our next presenter is Carol College. 
Good evening, everyone. I do apologize due to some technical difficulties at the hotel I'm at. I don't have my presentation able um, to be up on the screen. So thank you so much for your time. My name's Elizabeth Zimmerman. I am Assistant Director of Admissions and the Admission Counselor for all students from Colorado. I represent Carroll College, which is a small private Catholic liberal arts institution in Helena, Montana. Helena is the state capital, and one thing that that provides for our students is an amazing location for them to pursue not only their academics, but a future career as well as the outdoors. One of the big things in Montana that we really like to promote is that our location is great because we are about an hour and a half from Bozeman, about two hours from Missoula. We do have an airport and we have direct flights to Denver, so it makes traveling a little easier. Helena is a small college town. We've got about 36,000 people. One thing I love about it is how much our community loves Carol's students. It's not uncommon for you to walk by a coffee shop and someone will say, oh, hey, you're from Carol, 10% off your coffee today. They love our Carroll students. As a liberal arts institution, we really focus on our school motto, which is non school ed sed vitae, not for school, but for life. We provide over 40 majors at Carroll. We are best known for our biology pre-med. Right now, for the past 15 years, every year, we've had an 85% acceptance rate into medical school. We are also known for our nursing um, department. We had a 100% passing rate of the NCLEX in, for our class of 2020 and a 92% passing rate for our class of 21. So our students are extremely successful in going on to becoming nurses. We also have a wide variety, everything from education, civil engineering, to even our anthrozoology, which is the study of human and animal interactions and relationships. That helps students go on to physical therapy, veterinarian school, and even starting their own business. The biggest thing with us at Carroll is we want to make sure that you get hands-on learning. So not only are we having in-class discussions, and our classrooms are small. We have an average class size of 16, 12 to one student to faculty ratio, which means your professors really get to know you and what you wanna do. They wanna work with you, again, supporting our school motto of for life. So where do you want to go with your education? What career do you wanna have? What um, passions do you wanna pursue? And they wanna support you in that. We also really try to make sure that every single one of our students has an opportunity to study abroad and have an internship or research opportunity. We have students as starting their freshman year who are working with professors on funded research where they have the potential of being um, published as an undergraduate. Some other things we work with is trying to make sure that our students are ready um, to have the experiences. So we also provide two master's programs. We have a master's of accountancy and a master's of social work. And then we also work with students to get them into their graduate programs. As I mentioned, we are very successful with our medical school, but as well, we are very successful in getting students into physical therapy, physician's assistants, dental school, and many more. This really comes from that personalized attention you get at Carroll. The other big thing is the outdoors. And so one thing we always encourage our students to be a part of is camp. It's Carroll Adventure and Mountaineering Program. That group is dedicated solely to making sure our students get the chance to experience all the different things that Montana has to offer. In Helena itself, we, our campus is about a 12 minute walk to the trailheads of Mount Helena, which has over 75 miles of hiking and mountain biking. We have a ski hill that is 30 minutes away and only costs our students $25. I also love Helena because of how it's located. I could easily get to five different ski hills on the weekend for a day of skiing if I wanted to go somewhere else. We have three lakes close by as well. Camp has all the equipment you might need. Um, you can go camping with four friends and the total cost for all the equipment, all the gear, anything you might think of you need can be as low as $15. So we really try to make sure that's affordable for our students. We also try to introduce you to new things. So if you've never gone fly fishing before, we're right near the Missouri River, which is world-class fly fishing. And so we wanna make sure that you have that chance to experience it. We also have a very active campus. So we're not just everything is outdoors, though there's a lot of that. We have so many different clubs on campus, something for every major. We are also part of the NAIA athletics. So we have 15 different sports teams available and we are able to offer athletic scholarships. The other big thing that our students really enjoy doing is starting up clubs. We have a lot of different clubs from gaming to photography and film. We just started a trap shooting club on campus and archery as well. If there's a club we don't have, you can get the support to start your own club. So we really try to make sure students have a chance to pursue their passions. 
Another big part of Carroll College is that we are a Catholic college. We're ecumenical, which means we're welcoming of all faiths. So we don't require that you attend mass or go on any retreats, but it's another type of community that you can be a part of. Uh, we offer so many different retreats that you can attend men's and women's um, to uh, um, sophomore and freshman overnight. So that's just another aspect of Carroll you can be a part of. The last thing I want to touch on because my time is running out is that we do have some great financial aid. As a private institution, we start with merit awards that range from $16,000 to $23,000. You're guaranteed that amount every year for four years as long as your GPA stays above a 2.0. At Carroll, it's always free to apply. We accept the Common App as well as a Carroll application. We'll ask for a high school transcript. We've been test optional since before COVID, so you're not required to submit a test score and you can still qualify for the highest merit scholarship. The merit is the foundation of your award and it will be the base for everything else to build on top of it. So other academic scholarships, um, activity scholarships, anything like that will stack on top. I'll enter my contact information into the chat, but thank you so much. I again apologize that I didn't have slides to show you and I hope you will be in touch. Have a great evening. Thank you, Elizabeth. Our next presenter is University of Montana Western. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Matt Allen. I'm the Director of Admissions at the University of Montana Western. So Montana Western is a small public institution in southwestern Montana. Dillon is where we're located. So if you're looking for a smaller campus in a smaller town, we're a perfect fit. Uh, we're about 1,300 total students. And the population of Dillon itself is only about 5,000 people. Um, we're in a beautiful location. We're located in the Beaverhead Valley. We're surrounded by seven different mountain ranges. Um, being in a smaller community, we are literally minutes from hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, skiing, snowboarding. Um, there's three blue ribbon trout streams that are less than 20 minutes from campus. Um, three hot springs that are less than an hour's drive. So uh, basically endless outdoor opportunities, all those great outdoor activities that you like to do in Colorado, you can definitely do in Montana. So um, we are a general baccalaureate liberal arts institution. So we try and offer a wide array, array of programs for students. Our largest major is education. We were uh, the very first education school in the state of Montana when we were founded in 1893. So we can do early childhood, secondary, elementary education, but we have a lot of different majors as well. We can do business, environmental sciences, biology. Um, we do a great job of placing students into uh, pre-professional programs like med school, vet school, dental school, dental hygiene, things of that nature. And then we also have a lot of unique majors as well. We have the nation's only four-year accredited degree in natural horsemanship. Um, we have a glass uh, degree where you can specialize in scientific or artistic glass blowing. We have a state-of-the-art glass blowing studio on campus. So a lot of different majors that you can definitely pick and choose from. The most unique thing about Montana Western is how we teach our classes. We operate on a program called Experience One or X1. And how it works is instead of a normal semester-based system where you're taking multiple classes all together at the same time, typically with a little bit more emphasis being on the lecture side of things, what we do is we break our semesters into four three and a half week blocks. And then what students do for three and a half weeks is you take one course at a time. So all you have to do is focus on one subject, you have homework in one area, you have one professor to communicate with. And the whole goal of this program is we wanna eliminate lecture style courses and focus on experiential education. And what we mean by that is we want you actually doing the things in class that you're going to be doing for a profession starting your freshman and sophomore year. If you're an environmental science major, you're not sitting in a classroom hearing and reading about it, you're going to Yellowstone National Park and you're doing research. If it's education, you're in classrooms teaching lesson plans that you have designed, but it's all set up so that you're actually learning by doing things, focusing on one subject at a time with the goal of that when you graduate, you have two to three years of experience in your field of study. So that way, when you're applying for that job, you're applying to grad school right out of college, you have that experience that employers and grad schools are looking for to really make yourself stand out. And then just kind of show you versus a traditional semester-based system where you're taking multiple classes all together at the same time. Uh, the block system truly does simplify things for our students at Montana Western. If you come to school in Montana Western, you will never go home at night going, oh, I gotta do my math homework. I gotta do my history homework. I gotta read an English chapter because you're solely focusing on that one subject. You're learning from one professor at a time. 
Uh, you take your classes one at a time. Our professors teach one course at a time. So if you have a question after class, your professor is not going to blow you off because they have to go teach another class in 20 minutes. Your class is the only class that they're focused on. Our average class size is 15 and we cap our courses at 25. So there's a lot of individualized attention. And then we don't have finals week with the block program uh, that last week of the semester you're not going to have five tests and three presentations all do at the same time. So it really does help simplify your schedule. Another big advantage of Montana Western is our affordability. Um, we are the most affordable four year school in the state of Montana. Um, so out of state tuition is around 16,000 for the academic year. Uh, the nice thing is that we do offer the WUI scholarship as well. Any student from Colorado whose cumulative GPA is a 3.0 or higher after they graduate will automatically receive WUI. Uh, they don't even apply for it. And then what you pay is under $7,000 a year in tuition. And so uh, our return on investment is, is very high because uh, you're not having to go into significant debt to get your college education. The other nice thing is we allow students to stack scholarships. So if you get additional academic or university scholarships, athletic scholarships, we will stack that on top of that WUI and bring that cost down even farther. We also do the FAFSA program if you choose to submit a FAFSA, and that can also drive down your cost of attendance as well. Um, in addition to having endless outdoor opportunities, we are a four-year public institution. So we have clubs, we have organizations, we have intramural sports, we have um, a lot of unique things that we do on campus. Clubs and organizations can range from academic clubs to our skiing and snowboarding club and our paranormal activities club, if you wanna go find ghosts for some reason. So a lot of different things that you can definitely do. Um, students, the more involved they get on campus, they actually will earn points. And at the end of each semester, we do auctions where students can use those points and bid on things like flat screen TVs, laptop computers, gaming devices, scholarships. So just by getting involved on campus, you can win some pretty cool prizes. Uh, we are NAIA, so we do offer athletic uh, programs and uh, athletic scholarships. So as you can see, we offer football, basketball for men and women, rodeo, cross country, track, um, cheer, uh, volleyball. So um, these are our coaches and their direct contact information. If you're interested in competing at Montana Western, definitely let me know and I can get you connected with our coaches and they can talk to you about the recruitment process. Application or the um, admissions process is very similar to MSU. Basically, you just need to submit an application for admission. There's a $30 application fee. Send us an official or a current academic transcript and your immunization record showing MMR records. Once we have all that, we're going to be able to get you admitted. And um, we are test optional as well. If you'd like to send in your test scores, you can, but that's not a requirement. Uh, this is my contact information. This is a picture of my kiddos at one of the high mountain lakes uh, in Beaverhead County. So there's uh, a lot of high mountain lakes you can hike into. Very beautiful place to go to school. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. And thanks for letting me present. Thanks, Matt. So that concludes the presentation portion of our session today. We're now going to transition to the Q&A portion. I wanna encourage all of our attendees, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in that Q&A section um, and our panelists will respond. To all of our panelists, feel free to return, turn on your cameras and I'll pose a question to the group. Our panelists will respond to the question in the order in which they present it. So first question here, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? I think I'm first. Um, I would definitely say find your non-negotiables and your negotiables. Find the things that you know that you have to have in a college or university, because when you've got 4,000 options, it's really easy to want to go everywhere. And so if you can find a list of the things that you know that you need, whether that's outdoor recreation, a certain major of interest, or a price point that you're comfortable, and then finding a list of things that you're willing to maybe negotiate on. So I think creating that non-negotiable list would be mine. I know this sounds really remedial and basic, but try to keep yourself organized while you're going through this process. I definitely recommend having an Excel spreadsheet or something so you can really stay on top of deadlines because even if universities are in the same state, we all have different deadlines. We all have different requirements. So keeping yourself organized is a great way to stay on track and to make sure you're successful through this process. Um, I would say my piece of advice is it's never too early to start. Um, I'm going to just say 
from my college experience, uh, my parents wished that I had started a little sooner than I had. Um, I got pretty close to some deadlines. And so, you know, it might be really scary to start. You don't know where you want to go. You don't even know what you want to study. That was me. Um, but it's, it'll cause you less grief in the long run. Um, if you just kind of get going, um, and reach out to all of us, like that's what our jobs are, are here. We're here to help you and here to kind of get the ball rolling. So I just say, just start, it'll make it easier in the long run for you. Um, mine's always like go easy on yourself. I think that um, searching for a college can be a really stressful process. Um, and if you really know you want to get a college degree, but maybe don't know what you want to study yet, or like as you're going through, I guess, that non-negotiable list, like it's okay if you're like not quite sure yet. And it's our jobs to answer literally any question you have. Um, and even as you're like getting into school, if you don't know, I mean, several of us, I think have mentioned like our undeclared student programs that like, we're here to help you like from looking for what school you want to picking what major you want. Like, you don't have to have your whole life planned at 17 and um, you can find a great school to attend without having you know a 20 year plan so if you're one of those people that craves that plan but don't have it yet it's okay like give yourself some grace throughout the whole process definitely agree with what everyone said another thing i would say is with it's not ever too early to start is some things that you might not know if we have any juniors here, is that it's also never too early to start applying for scholarships. There are scholarships that students can start applying for as early as junior year and can go through your sophomore year in college that there are opportunities. So I just encourage students, you know, use that Excel list, have your checklist off, kind of make your to-dos, but also, again, like everyone said, reach out to us. That's what we're here for is to help, you know, if you have questions about just college in general, ask us. That's what, that's our job. Um, I could just say ditto and just agree with everybody. Um, but yeah, no, uh, one of the things that I definitely recommend too is uh, reach out to us. Um, it's amazing to me how often sometimes I'll hear from students and they'll be like, well, I didn't want to bother you. Um, bother me. Um, you, if you don't know the answer, uh, you have a face and a name, you know somebody that you can contact. Um, and even if it's not an admissions question, you don't know where to start, um, you can start with us and we'll get you in touch with with who has the answer if we don't know um, the answer to your question, so. Great advice from the group. Um, we are approaching the end of our virtual college fair for today. Um, but before we close, I do have a few closing announcements. As you exit this Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions, but please, please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings. I also want to remind you to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, you can access this recording by visiting strivespan.com slash Greater Denver. I want to thank all of our amazing panelists for joining us, but also thank you to all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you again.